गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस होप सो यू आर फाइन टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू आवर लेक्चर नंबर 3 एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू बिफोर दैट आवर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इज द डिटेल्ड इंफॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग टू द एचएससी टूल सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द फर्स्ट एचएससी टूल दिस टूल इज कॉल्ड परमिट टू वर्क सिस्टम एज इट इज रिटन ऑन द ब्लैक बोर्ड पीटीडब्ल्यू इट इज कॉल्ड इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज पीटीडब्ल्यू सो P stands for permit, T stands for do, and W stands for work. What is actually the permit to work? First of all, we will go through its initial meaning, why it is required, and uh, what is the purpose of giving this name permit to work. Actually, this permit to work is a permission. When you are doing some job in the oil industries, when you are doing some job, these jobs are very critical in operations. Many persons are involved. Many equipments are involved. So when you are doing the job, you need to take a permission that I am doing the job at a specific location with a specific equipment and with a specific number of the people. So when you are giving this information to the higher authority, so they will issue you some permit. They will give you some permission. But this permission not considered as a verbal permission. You know, verbal permission doesn't means anything. You must have something uh, in the written form which will help you out to. Follow up all the procedures and to get up through all the hazards which are uh, occurring in the uh, operation, and uh, you can easily define in the detailed document all the information which you have observed, which you have selected, and what type of the equipment and what type of the operation job you are doing in the uh, operational side, and uh, what type of the facts or the hazards which you can uh, incur during this uh, job uh, at the worksite location. So when we are considering Uh, this permit to work system actually first of all we go for its definition what is a permit to work system it is a written formal document written formal document you cannot say it a written mandatory document it is a formal document and it is mandatory it is mandatory because you know when you are doing something some job you must to take in account some persons who are doing the job with you even though your managers your uh, line departments who are accountable and responsible for the things which you are which you will do in the future at the work site location but before going through doing the operation you have to go through some written documents this written document is called as a permit to work system in the permit to work system uh, you will define the things which are mandatory what are these things these are the things that what type of the job you are doing what type of the safety equipments you have what type of the hazards in your vicinity what type of the other simultaneous jobs which are being run during your operational activities means when you are doing a job in the oil industry there is only known not only you who is working there are some other companies who are also working with you so your uh, job must be have a compatibility with the other person's job so your job will not disturb the other person's job you have to check the area work site location what type of the hazards are involved and you have to calculate it in the form in the written form in the ptw so ptw is very important and when you are uh, utilizing or doing a critical job you must have to perform it do not take it as a piece of paper because actually it is not a piece of paper it will help you out in lot of situations because when you have gone through all the written steps of the checklist which is mentioned in the ptw you can make it sure one by one check it by your own self and make it uh, sure that these things are fulfilled and implemented now next we will go for the purpose the purpose is actually for the permit permit work system is that that it will uh, it will make you channelize it will channelize your operation how it channelize your operation because it is <coughs> to judge the consequences of the hazards which can occur in your job so it will make you feel free when you go through all these checklists in the ptw and the ptw formats you can easily rectify these things if you some if some things are missing in your operation activities this is the purpose to control the hazard inside the workplace area the types of the ptw next we will go through the types of the ptw there are many types of ptws and some certificates which are involved with the ptw the first one is called the hot work permit hot work permit is activated in those activities where there is a involvement of or creation of the heat for example you are doing a fabrication job you are doing a welding job it requires a hot work permit okay and where there is a creation of a heat operation grinding cutting 
you have many things which have which involved the creation of the heat the, even though when you are uh, utilizing a crane during the crane operations so there is the creation of heat through the exhaust there is a ignition which is running which is running the engine this will uh, make it uh, involved in the hot work permit then comes the cold work permit cold work permit is that permit which does not involve any creation of the heat you are doing a lifting operation it is comes in the uh, cold work permit you are doing a forklift operation it is considered as a cold work permit so anything any operation which does not involve any production of the heat it is considered in the part of a cold work permit work at height this is very important permit and sometimes this 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 permit is often neglected because the people don't think so that while working at the height there is uh, any dangerous or something like this when you're working at the height first of all you need to know what is a work at height if you're working more than 1.8 meters so there is a chance that if you fall from that height you can have an injury maybe you can go through a fatal accident so uh, while utilizing a job which involves work at height you need to go through a work permit which is called work at height permit and work at height permit involves many things checklist PPEs which is very important for you to uh, catch up with your employees because the safety of the operation and the safety of the employees it must be very important then we go through the confined space what is the confined space simple example I will give you through the confined space first of all you need to know the definition about the confined space limited entry into limited exits any place which have a limited entry and limited exits and there is no permanent occupancy of the employees in that area uh, so this involves the confined space you can take the examples of the water tanks uh, you can uh, take the examples of uh, the tanks of the or the pouches of the fuel tankers which are going traveling which are taking the fuel from the petrol pumps or to the other area or to the other cities so these are considered as the uh, confined space entry then we go for the electrical work electrical work you know electricity is very dangerous so electricity when you're doing a job with the electricity you must know that you have to take a permission regarding to the electrical work because it means uh, de-energization of the equipment you have to de-energize the equipment before working because any person who is working with the live electricity may got an electrical shock so this is very important electrical work permit lifting this lifting is not considered as a permit but actually it comes under certificate when you are doing a job with any kind of a thing uh, involving the hot walls or cold walls and if there is some uh, lifting of the equipment so you need a crane crane is doing for lifting operations or having lifting so you need to have a lifting certificate because you know crane operation is not a simple operation it involves critical lifting so many checklists or many things are to be observed before the startup of a crane operation then we go for its application where it is applied there are two types of works which requires the permit to work one is called the routine job another is called the non-routine job non-routine job is is those jobs which you not often continuously do inside your workplace area sometimes you do but not continuously or not frequently you will do in your workplace area and the routine works are the those works which are actually you perform every day on daily basis frequently uh, during your job operation activities when you go through all these things I will told you what is the type of routine work I will let you know about the non-routine jobs because when if you don't understand these things you will not go further so we will go for this steps in the later lectures routine work and non-routine work roles when you are doing the job using the permit to work system taking permit to work system into account you have to go through this process first of all these four persons are involved in the permit to work you know i have told you that uh, permit to work is a permission so it, when you are taking the permission it means you are taking the all the persons one by one in account that i am doing a job at this specific work location and there is these hazards i have look after these hazards and i have taken remedial measures against these hazards and finish it so first of all the first person is called the applicant applicant is the person who apply for the permit i am the person for example i am doing a job at a specific location and i what i do i issue a permit i i go to the higher authority ask them i have to perform this job at a specific location and have this specific equipment please give me or issue me a permit so i am the applicant over there 
Issuer. Issuer is that person who issues the permit. This is the area authority. Area authority is that person who is supervising the whole operation and who is the in charge of the whole area. He is the issuing authority. Then called the receiver. The receiver is I am also. And he, I, I, I am the applier. He is the issuer, the area authority. And I am the receiver because I receive the permit from him. First of all, I need to fulfill all these things. Hot work, if I am doing a uh, operation which involves operation of heat, I will fill up this format with the hot work. Then if I need for cold work, I will do for the cold work format procedures, work at height procedures, confined space, electrical work, lifting. Then I go to this person, he will issue me the permit and then the receiver I am, performing authority. Performing authority is your department who is working at that location. Okay. So you need to understand that who is the applicant, who is the issuer, who is the receiver and who is the performing authority. Performing authority is the person who is actually doing the job at that specific location at the specific area. So this is all about the permit to work system. This is very, one by one we will go through these permits. Later on I will share the pictures of these permit to work systems with the specific formats. So you can easily understand what type of things are there in say, inside these work permits. And uh, if you have any questions regarding to this, uh, do let me tell on my uh, Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, I will let you know. But other thing which I need to connect with it, the permit work system, before I told you that GSA is the part of permit work system. GSA, later on we will discuss, but I will give an overview of this GSA. What is the GSA? GSA is job safety analysis. You need to analysis the job, make analysis of the job and get the hazards in the job and to apply the control measures to make it effectively run in the smooth manner and in the safe manner for the safety of the person for the safety of the employees. So the GSA is a little portion which I will discuss in the next lecture. But you need to understand first of all the basic tool, the permit to work system. What is the permit, why it is required, where it is applied, when it is applied and who to need to know about what type of the permit you need, require and what type of the job is associated with that permit. So this is all about for the today's lecture. This is part one, section one of the HSC2. Thank you guys. Thanks.